Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a secondhand piece that I've bought, which I'm delighted with. And I thought I would also um, chat to you a little bit um, about this bag and also um, if you are thinking about getting one yourself second hand, how to spot a fake as well, I've got a few tips on that too. Um, so you will have seen by the thumbnail of course, the bag that I'm talking about and here it is. I feel like often with these sort of videos, it takes ages to see the bag, doesn't it? We'll, sh we'll show it you in the first minute. We're not gonna hang about, I'm too excited. <laughs> this is the bag that I'm going to be talking you through that I have bought second hand. And I wanted to get this video out um, at the current time as well because it is of course second hand September that many people are taking part in. If you haven't heard about second hand September, it's essentially um, where you can pledge not to buy anything new throughout the month of September and just buy second hand things if you are going to buy anything for your wardrobe and that sort of thing, or even for your home I guess as well. Um, so regular viewers, here will know that obviously I love secondhand stuff, I love my charity shops, I love my car boot sales and I thought maybe some people might have stumbled across this video because they're interested in buying kind of a luxury designer bag secondhand as well. So I'm going to try and make it kind of quite factual in terms of um, how to do that and ways to do that and how to get maybe the best bargain and how to look out for those fake items too. And this bag is actually something that I've wanted for years and years and years I've had my eye on one of these, I think since I first saw them, and every time I see somebody, when I'm on my travels, with a bag like this, I always admire it, and yeah, I've just always wanted one, so I'm absolutely delighted that I now have one that I can use myself for years to come as well. And this has already had a few years um, of use, I'll tell you a little bit more about um, how old this bag is when we go into it in a bit more detail. But before we jump into the video, if you're new here, do click subscribe, I post new videos every single week and if you enjoy this one and you like the bag <laughs> then do give it a thumbs up. Secondhand September, I've got my secondhand mug on the go. We've got a vintage Starbucks one that was 50p from a uh, charity shop. That charity shop haul will be linked in the description box if you want to go and have a little watch of that if you haven't done so already. So quick sip of the tea and we'll get into the video. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the designer of this bag, which is, of course, Louis Vuitton. I'm sure many of you will have heard of Louis Vuitton already, and I've just been reading up a bit about the history, and Louis Vuitton was 16 years old in 1837, and that's when he arrived in Paris by foot, and it was then that he made the decision to become a trunk master. So if you go back and look at historic Louis Vuitton pieces, they're these amazing trunks that people used to take on their travels with them. Some of them are almost like wardrobes. They're so incredible and they've got the same monogram design on them that you see um, in the current times. And yeah, they're just incredible because they kind of take you back to that era. And I just love all that stuff. I love the idea of these trunks that used to go around with people's clothes in and you open them up and they've even got like drawers inside them. And people would travel with these amazing pieces of essentially what is now like our suitcases, but obviously they were much bigger because they were traveling with a lot bigger clothes, I suppose. And yeah, I just find it really fascinating that this brand has so much history behind it. And whenever I'm on my travels and I see this print and this kind of like leather and this look, it just always makes me think of the good old days when travel might have been a little bit more glamorous, probably wasn't, let's face it, if you're going around on a horse-drawn cart, but we can fantasize, can't we? But you can just imagine, um, some of the kind of journeys that some of those trunks went on and yeah, I just find it really interesting I love the fact that this is a brand that has history behind it and yeah I don't know. I just I really like it and I really like the look of their pieces So I've always had it in mind to get one of these for myself But they do come with a hefty price tag now. I did introduce a Louis Vuitton piece into my life earlier in this year actually. So you may remember on a previous video that I was treating myself to something for my birthday and then it didn't arrive and that was in fact a Louis Vuitton passport holder because I had this idea that I love the brand, I love the look of it and I thought it'd be really nice to have something from them that I could take on my travels and just always look at and that thing 
being a passport holder I thought would be perfect because my passport is something that's so important to me because I absolutely love travelling and then I thought it would be really nice to have it encased in something that whenever I get out of my bag, whenever I sort of present it to somebody when I'm getting on the flight, that's going to make me smile even though actually you always have to take your passport out of the passport holder, don't you? Which is quite annoying. <laughs> but anyway, it will always make me happy when I take that out of my bag. So I bought one of those secondhand, but it was actually out of stock. So that was from a secondhand kind of dealer um, website. And I've been looking for one of the, it was the same brown monochrome print um, passport holders for ages. So um, that I thought would be arriving, it didn't arrive. And then my friend Charlie, who is modish male, had also been after one. He'd been keeping an eye on the Louis Vuitton website because they're always out of stock as well. That's the other thing. So they're never in stock on the Louis Vuitton website. They came in stock, he dropped me a little message, and so I think I had a glass of wine or two and I bought myself one brand new. So that was um, a little big splurge on something that's quite small, obviously, but it was something that I decided I was going to get. I put the money aside for it and that was my birthday treat to myself. Having had a holiday just cancelled, I thought, right, that's gonna be that. I'm getting it. <laughs> so. That is now in the wardrobe upstairs. It's in its box and I will show you that in a future video next time I'm going on an aeroplane and we'll make that a nice little, let's look at that then. But for this video I want to focus on the second hand stuff but I've basically got a little set now going on for my travels. So I've got the bag and I've got the passport holder. I feel like I'm really rambling about this but I just wanted to explain to you that I haven't just kind of gone out and bought a designer item for the sake of it. And the fact that I think they have this kind of historic feel to them, means that I think they'll kind of stand the test of time in terms of fashion and in terms of trends. A thing like this, I just don't think it goes out of fashion. I don't think it's particularly in fashion. I just think it's timeless and classic, which I really like. So this bag is called a Keepall, Hello Motorbike, and it is a Keepall 55. And what that means, is it's 55 centimetres across here. So this bag will actually come in different sizes and so that size is the length of it. I guess you'd also call this a hold all or a weekend bag but on the Louis Vuitton website these are called keepals and on the Louis Vuitton website this size, let's have a look, is currently retailing at 1,100 sorry, 1,440 pounds, currently unavailable. So, I've been keeping an eye out on eBay for these and I keep looking and refreshing and just keeping my eyes peeled. And I spied this on eBay for 400 pounds. And at the time, I didn't pay too much attention to it. There's a surprise coming in this video as well, by the way, that is gonna make you, if you're into stuff like this, a bit later on, you're gonna scream. Let's just uh, throw that out there if you're into stuff like this. Otherwise, you'll just be like, oh, I don't care. So this was £400 and I sort of just looked at it. I don't know what I thought. I, I thought maybe that's probably fake, um, to be honest with you. And I thought maybe I'll have a look when bids start to come in. But then I had an email from eBay saying, buy it now, offer £350. So eBay or the seller sort of knew that I'd looked. I think that's how it works. I didn't know that was a thing on eBay. But I got this email saying, £350, buy it now, offer. So then I paid attention. And I started zooming into pictures and checking them all and having a proper good look. And then, yeah, I think there was a glass of wine situation again, common theme. And um, does anyone else book holidays in this way as well? Glass of wine and then before you know it, buttons have been pressed and some you're going somewhere. Anyway, glass of wine situation, zoomed in on all the pictures, had a look at some things which I'm going to explain to you to see if you can spot fake or not. Thought it looks real and also thought with eBay you've got the PayPal guarantee as well. I did also message the seller and said, is this a genuine item? And um, I had a response from the seller and explained to me, yes it is, and there was a personal sort of circumstance um, as to why it was being sold, essentially. I thought, well, let's give it a go. There is the PayPal guarantee if it is fake, and we'll see what arrives in the post. And then I sent some messages to my friend Charlie, who has a similar bag, to sort of ask him his opinion. And he thought it was looking promising from some of the details on the bag itself as to whether it would be authentic or not. And now I have it in my hands. I can confirm that I'm 99% sure that this is 
an authentic bag. I really hope that nobody's going to watch this who's a complete expert on this and tell me <laughs> that it's fake. I'll be very, very disappointed because I've now given the seller the good feedback as well. So I think it'd be too late to get a refund on it. But I'm pretty certain um, that we do have a genuine item here. And let me explain to you why and some of the things that you can look out for if you're buying a similar piece to this one. So the first thing is we have the pattern on here, don't we? So it's upside down on this side, and that's because it is one piece that actually goes right the way around underneath and up the other side. So it's the correct way up on one side of the bag, and the same piece of canvas goes right the way around to this side. With bags like this one, you will notice when you look closely that everything's very symmetrical with the monogramming on it. So let's take a look across the top of the bag and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So you see here, it should match here. It's the same. And then let's look uh, maybe at the underside of the bag. So again, you should see symmetry right the way across. So here, if you just measure in my finger there to the LV, and then here, let's have a look, that and that are the same. So that will give you an idea that things are looking promising for it to be real. But the detail doesn't stop there in terms of how symmetrical things are. So take a look at the sides as well, and you'll see it here too. So you see that and that are completely symmetrical right the way across. And it's been lined up, so it's really nicely positioned on the leather work, as you can see. And the same on this side too. So you can see here at the top, symmetrical and nicely centered as well. There's some more details on these bags that will give you a good clue as to whether it's authentic or not. So have a look at the letter work on the luggage tag here. Now you can see here that it says Louis Vuitton uh, Paris made in France. Louis Vuitton bags will be made in different countries and they'll have different codes on the inside or certain places that will actually um, explain where they've been made. So you can actually look those up online as well. But take a look at the text itself and you'll see that it's nice, thin, but very clear lettering. Sometimes with a fake, that will be quite spaced out and it won't look quite as uniform as that. So that's a good place to look. And this is beautiful soft leather. As, sorry, I've just knocked you. <laughs> this is beautiful soft leather here as well. Take a look at the brass wear as well and see how that's worn down because if it's not brass, when it's worn down, it might start to change color. So where anything's kind of worn away, you might lose the gold. Whereas this has actually gone kind of just quite brassy looking if that makes sense, probably not the best description. And the zip as well just feels like a really good quality zip. Now, sadly, the keys aren't with this. One thing that Louis Vuitton did invent back in the day was a lock that can't be picked. So I'm not sure how much luck we're gonna have getting into this, but thankfully the bag isn't locked, so it's just on the zip, so no worries there, really. We also have another padlock on the side here too. So it does come with two. I'm gonna take this into the Louis Vuitton shop and see what they say about it and see if there's any keys um, that could be made available to this because I think that would make it all the better. So we have the strap as well. So the strap is leather. You can see the detail work on the strap and you can also see how nice the stitching is. And even on the buckle, you can see that is a good quality uh, piece here. You've got the extra detail. And then on the hardware here, you've got the uh, Louis Vuitton logo as well. And then on the handles, this area here where you can see into the leather, if it's fake, that can turn a really deep red. Whereas here, you'll see it's slightly more of a brownish color as well, more um, in keeping with the, with the uh, canvas part as well. So another thing to look out for, it's quite hard to see, and I don't know if it's gonna pick up on the camera. But just in here, just above my fingernail, there's a number there and it says 55, but I don't know if it's reading. Can you see it? It's very faint, but the number there that's been stamped in is the size of the bag. So that's how I knew that this should be 55 centimeters across. 
and then inside we should have another stamp as well and the place to locate that stamp on a bag like this one is on the inside of the handle so you can see here we have two leather flaps excuse the <laughs> term we've got one here that has a little keychain on RIP the keys wherever they may be they're gonna be in the kitchen drawer aren't they somewhere let's face it or they've been lost down a drain and on this one we have a date stamped on so let me just show you first of all and we can read this um, stamp and I'll explain to you what this means so this one says MB and that is a code of the country where this was made. So I looked at the country list and it said uh, MB is one of the um, French locations where these are made. So loads of different um, letter combinations for different countries where bags are produced. And then it has a date. So this one says 10, 26. And so the way you work out the date is you skip a number. So 10, 10, zero, two six but the numbers you jump one so one and two is 12 and then zero and six is zero six so this means this bag was made uh, the month being 12 so in december and the year zero six 2006 so i know that this bag is so this bag is about 16 years old. Have I got that right? I think I've got that right. Oh, 13. I just had to look that up. <laughs> so this bag is 13 years and nine months old. So nearly 14 years old. So it's doing pretty well for that. It's got a um, couple of holes. Well, they're very tiny, just more like scuffs on the corners, which is actually common with this bag. Um, and it just is where it gets bumped on the wall or, you know, rubbed along the floor a little bit. But they're not too bad. I might investigate if there's a way to kind of prevent those getting any bigger. And then the inside is just nice brown canvas. It doesn't look the cleanest, so I'm going to see if I can get this cleaned. On the website there is some cleaning instructions and it says just to use very, um, well, actually just use water if you can, or a very mild soapy water so maybe i'm thinking some baby shampoo or something like that just very very gently to um wipe over the bag but i'm going to go into store and ask for some advice first i want to make sure that i get that right and with the leather they say not to do anything so if this stains they say the best thing to do is just let the stain kind of age in with the leather and i love the fact that it's already old because if things are already a little bit bashed up you're not sort of worrying about them and i will be actually using this on my travels as well so that's pretty much it one more thing to look out for with the pattern is if you follow it it should also have symmetry so these bags have been made to measure impeccably the detail is incredible when um, we look at the details so um, let's take an example here so remember that and then we're going to follow it right the way around the bag so here we have this shape we're going to go right the way along that diagonal and we're going to follow the same line sorry it's going off camera a tiny bit keep my finger running along it right the way along keep going all the way to the seam and it's the same one with the same spacing so not only does this pattern repeat symmetrically that way when you follow these diagonals they should hit the seam exactly the same as well let's try another one just to show you that i'm not cheating um which one should we do let's try something from let's try something from the middle so here we have the circular one and it's cut in half isn't it so let's follow this one so we'll go down pay attention <laughs> just keep my finger there keep it going along keep going Keep going, keep going, keep going. That one there. And there we have it. Are you ready for the surprise? What are you saying? It wasn't just the hold all. It was a hold all and a wash bag. So say hello to my new friend for the bathroom shelf. 
that will be containing all of my travel miniatures <laughs> when I go for my three for five for five for three or whatever it is at the airport. I'll be filling this up with the old Saint Tropez. <laughs> um, yeah, so essentially, um, I sort of kept this in as a surprise for the video, but the listing was actually for the two items together as well, and these are still retailing as well. The design has changed slightly, um, but these would retail brand new on the Louis Vuitton website at £595. So I was absolutely delighted to get both of these second hand and for a really good price. And they will be things that I absolutely treasure forever. And you will be seeing a lot of them um, on my travels. So yeah, stand by for um, these just lurking <laughs> in any photos um, that I take when maybe I'm staying in a hotel or something. I'm sure you might spy them um, knocking about. But the only thing with this one is it has been mended. So what's happened to this one here is you might notice that the strap has actually snapped. And I guess that's from basically where you would be pulling this on a regular basis, you know, um, or maybe even carrying it using this if you're off to the bathroom or, you know, just moving around, packing up your suitcase in a hotel, that sort of thing. So where that's probably been pulled a lot, it's the leather's actually snapped here. So that's actually completely open. So what they've done is a little repair job on it, whereby they've just used like a key ring piece of metal, just like a cheap thing you'd probably find on a key fob. And they've just done a kind of basic repair. And this is the original piece of leather, but as I say, it's snapped on there. So what I'll do is I will take this into store because these loops here should actually be more of a horseshoe shaped piece of brass um, or nicer hardware, I think. And then this piece obviously should not be snapped, but to be honest, I don't really mind. It's absolutely fine as it is now. It has the leather flap. <laughs> I always have to say that word in a video, don't I? Um, I can't think what else to um, describe it as. Leather handle thing here and um, yeah just really nice um, little wash bag there's some work to be done in this one it has been well used and as you can see there's spilt toothpaste inside it and all sorts um, there's even some toothpaste I mean it doesn't look very nice at all whatsoever so I will be washing my hands after filming this video and giving this a proper cleanse deep clean and I may even take it in for professional clean somewhere because there are handbag clinics and that sort of thing where you can do that. But yeah, just to show you with the toothpaste, the branding on there, and there is that internal zip inside as well, um, which has the little LV on it there too, but you'll get loads in that. And you know, it is a little bit manky at the moment, but I'll clean it up. I'll make sure it's thoroughly um, disinfected, cleansed, and it will be perfect for my travels, along with the hold all and the passport holder. I'll just show you as well, even the detail on the popper here, you can see um, has the letters stamped into it. So I'm pretty sure that um, we have a genuine piece here as well. So yeah, that concludes this video. Um, let me know what you think. Do you think I got a good bargain? Do you think it's real? Have you ever found something really good um, secondhand online as well? I thought it'd be quite interesting as well to share with you um, buying something from eBay as well because often I'll share with you things from charity shops and car boot sales and some of you say that you don't have access to them near you or maybe your charity shops aren't um, quite so good as other ones. So maybe looking online at some secondhand options like eBay or different uh, secondhand websites might get you a bargain too. Maybe something that you've always wanted. You never know. So yeah, have fun looking online if you are um, going to have a little browse and I've inspired you. I'll link um, eBay in the description box um, to the selection of kind of these kind of bags so you can go through and have a look at some of the ones that are available at the current time. I do think it is definitely a case with kind of luxury pieces just to keep checking. You never know your luck, you never know what you might find. So if there's something you've got in mind, keep searching for it and it might just show up for you. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I might do a follow-up one where I get these cleaned up and also if I do take them into store, I'll update you. I'll feel like such a wally if I take them in and they say they're fake. <laughs> Can you imagine? But it's been an experience anyway and yeah. I really like both of the pieces that I've got here. So um, that will be this video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Do give it a little thumbs up if you did. And yeah, let me know in the comments if you're interested to see kind of a cleaning process on these. I might even DIY that and see if I can have a go myself once I've done some research. So yeah, we'll keep you posted on 
on that. Don't forget you can always catch me over on Instagram. It's Mr. Carrington or Mr. Carrington Home for daily updates. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.